Just add like putting your hand over his face, face at some point. Just like this should be, if the last movie was chaos, this is chaos times 10. There always has to be a personal connection for me, something I can relate to. And I never thought of it in terms of like, we gotta go big, we gotta make this gigantic. To me, it was just reminding myself of what it felt like to uh, be about to graduate high school. John has an essential, like, Peter Parker-ness. John Watts is everything. This is his vision, his movie. He has complete command. You can see his progression from homecoming to now in that he really is on his game right now. Bravo! So do you like make your own webs inside of your body? I, I feel like you're teasing me right now. Yeah, you know, he, he's not teasing you. It's just that, you know, he can't do that, so. I was just trying to not get fired on the first one. <laughs> it was a private conversation. I don't like joking about this. It was hard for me to talk to you about. But it, they were high school movies to me. So I thought if you start sophomore year, you could do sophomore year, junior year, senior year, one movie at a time for me. And now it's senior year. John Watts just rolled up his sleeves and brought this tone that felt a little bit younger, a little bit more subversive in a comedic way. He brought this quirky sensibility. John Watts came in and he said, I want to do it like a John Hughes movie. That was entirely his idea from the very beginning. This is sort of his breakfast club. This is kind of his journey into that arena. John has this incredible ability to relate and then show the world that kind of teenage perspective. What was really interesting about it for me is John's sensibility of this almost high school comedy wrapped into this Marvel universe. What I think separates his versions of Spider-Man is that it's not serious. What I love about John Watts is the way he's able to undercut the seriousness of the films by layering in that these kids just want to go to college. Yeah. He loves bringing out the humor. He's encouraging us to improvise and to kind of throw in. When he's got the takes that he wants, he'll always say, OK, one more just for you. Do what you want to do. Now let's have some more fun or do whatever you want. He always gives you an opportunity to play around. One more like that, that was amazing. I've watched you from deep behind Norman's cowardly eyes, struggling to get everything you want while the world tried to make you choose. Gods don't have to choose. We take. Great, last one, Goblin's Choice. And so he's always letting us improv a few takes on different lines and finding the scene so that we could breathe some humanity and life into those moments. Have you been listening this whole time? Hi, Happy. You yeah, have been listening ever since you stepped on my hose. I, I didn't. Maybe it's broken. <laughs> John is amazing. Just how skilled he is with putting these movies together while not losing connection to character and what's going on and the emotionality of it. He really handles that so deftly. I really enjoyed that and making things funny, <laughs> no matter what it is, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Ready? All right, what you think? Not a lot of directors have that confidence to be able to float it all up in the air and juggle it and then put it together. That's a unique quality. So let me do like one that's really like wide eyes eye. wide. Yeah, just from yeah. the top. OK, let's, yeah, let's try that. John is oh, really good because he's tough, he's clear, he has vision. He's a real filmmaker, but he's also loose. And the other thing, which is really important, I think, is that he takes the work very seriously, but himself not at all. I feel like if that's like any indication of what he is like as a director, he's just very smart and like he knows what he wants. Not a pushover, not afraid to say, mm, that doesn't work. No, I nah, I don't do that. I'm gonna do this because he has it in his head. And I think that there's been many times where I've shot something and I'm like, this looks amazing. And John's like, yep, it does, but just do it again and take a beat because I'm just gonna add a line in there for Tom to say something. He's not afraid of going deep when it's deep. He's not afraid of going crazy and weird and offbeat humor when that's called for. And he's able to like keep a light, fun set while having all the responsibility. It's just so cool. He knows what he can and cannot do and what he should and should not do on these sets. What's accomplishable and what's not. So he really has grown. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> I'm happy. Let's do one more for shits and giggles. Let's do it. The reason why I think John's so collaborative is he takes the kind of old school Disney approach of, you know, best idea wins. He's always open to anyone, whether it's a person working at craft service or if it's a PA, 
The first day I walked in to a story room, new to the Spider-Man franchise with MCU, I'm just gonna be a fly on the wall. He turns to me and he says, what do you want to see in this movie? And as good as John is at the big stuff and as good as he is at the action, and he's great, he's really an actor's director too. Working with John has been great. He's always just been open to suggestions and just open to conversations. And sometimes they happen the night before, the weeks before, right before we start filming, or, you know, second the day starts. I like to come on set now because even days that I'm not needed here, I come on set to watch because I love learning and sitting behind John and hopefully one day I'll be able to direct something. So, I mean, no better place to learn than right behind our very incredible director who loves to answer my questions. He's never above just putting himself out there, being with the actors as they're trying to figure it out. On set, we collaborate. He gives me line readings that are so good. And then at the end, I, I think it looks like it's like, so who's coming with me? So who's coming with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons I enjoy working with John Watts so much is because there's a tremendous amount of freedom within the parameters of what the day's work is. And I think that's what has made these movies so much fun to make. These Spider-Man films wouldn't work if John wasn't that collaborative. On the first movie, he was nervous, and now he's just like this baller director. You know how people kind of level up in a video game? That's sort of John Watts through like three movies. John Watts has done such a wonderful job of creating this genre of superhero movie that kind of hasn't been told before. It's great to just go back to Homecoming and Far From Home and figuring out any other things that we could connect because I just want it to be a complete world where you can see things in this movie that are referencing back to things in the first movie so that it does feel like one story that we've been telling over three movies. It's really nice to have a level of that, like, positive reinforcement of, like, oh, you didn't completely f it up, you know? Uh, screwed up. Sorry. Yeah, what is the, what is the one soundbite that will actually be in this that you want me to say?